it's getting to be a little humorous for me. About every, oh, I don't know, three or four days. <laughs> I uh, get up and I get this wild idea that, you know, I think I'm going to move everything inside. Record morning devotions next to the nice planters or the hanging setup that I have in there that looks really nice. So I get this whole wild idea that I'm going to do that. So I get up and I don't pray about it, you know, talk to God about it. I just go, ah, eh, you know, makes sense because it's a cloudy day or, you know, it might have been cold like it was maybe oh, a couple hours ago. And, you know, I'm not really all together, but, you know, I think I'll do it anyway. So I take everything inside and I set it all up and I work on the cameras and I work on the lighting and I work on this, that, and the other thing. And <laughs> that <it> works. <laughs> get all blurry and just can't match natural lighting you know and I think God's trying to teach me a lesson to that that as much as we try artificially to simulate light we really can't do it I mean we can over brighten it and then we adjust our cameras down for it but we really can't get the natural lighting you know that God provides for us whether through clouds or in bright sunlight doesn't matter we just can't seem to get the full spectrum that God gives us. And that, frankly, my camera <laughs> wants. <laughs> and apparently, so does the Lord. Because no matter how hard I try inside to record, it just isn't working right. So who knows? Maybe we'll be out here in the shivering cold and have a coat on. But be in Alaska, and I think I can handle it. Or lived in Alaska. A lot of times, I think, for myself, we always have an idea of what we want to do. And we keep trying to do it irregardless of what God is showing us He wants us to do. Because I think a lot of times people will take their gift or their calling or their ministry or whatever it may be, and then shoot off in some direction. And God says, okay, you know, when you get done, come on back, you know, and they go do their thing and make their big kingdom or whatever it may be and have some great success. And then finally, 10 years down the road, kaboom, crash and burn. And, you know, maybe look around and say, you know, this doesn't feel the same way it did when I first got saved, you know. Somehow I, I, I've gone off on a tangent. And God says, yep, I'm still back over here waiting for you to come back. And I don't know if your life's like that, but... If you ever feel like you're kind of like gone too far ahead of God, maybe it's time to turn around and go back to God and slow down. You know, the world's going to end. You can't stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Life is going to go on without you. Guess what? You're going to go to heaven. You're going to make it. Relax. Chill out. And have some quality time, you know. Don't get so rat raced or running that you don't walk with God today. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved to my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. You know, that word manifest is interesting. I will make myself known to him. Oh, like Revelation? <laughs> Revealing Jesus? Yeah. Because you see, the more that you do what Jesus said, the less you're so consumed by the world, and you're focused in on the things that God is interested in and then he begins to reveal more to you but if you keep yourself focused only on the things of the world like ministry that's a thing of the world there will be no ministry in heaven I'm sorry so 
whenever you think of your ministry or the ministry that you call God's and you say, you know, it's not yours, but it's the Lord's and yada, yada, whatever. You know, come on, let's get real. That's your ministry. So, you know, put a name on it, take responsibility and, you know, get over it. But when you finally get to a place of realization that, you know, it's not going to heaven, frankly, you're just trying to help others get there. You know, and that's the bottom line. That's what Jesus was all about. Revealing the Father so they could have a relationship, so they could all get to heaven and get to know When you get to that point, then you realize it's not so much doing these mega things in order to get notoriety and more people, but it's more about how much do you know about Jesus himself? How much do you know about the Father? That's what you should be growing in, because as you kind of get to know the Lord more, you know, people kind of want to know what you know. Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself to us and not unto the world? If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. You mean God the Father and Jesus themselves will both abode with me? <clears throat> Meaning, they're going to come into my house? Uh-oh. Time to clean house, isn't it? Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. You see, God really does want to spend time with you. He wants to walk with you like he did in the garden with Adam. He wants you to know him that way. So sometimes if you're running off to do your own thing, you're forgetting the most important person you left behind was God himself because he's very gentle. He will not run after you. He's not going to jump ahead of you. He doesn't have to. He's not going to stop you from doing what you think you ought to do. But you know, there's a part of God's love that is so tender that he loves you so much that he just wants to spend time with you. Have you ever thought of doing that? One on one? You know, right now? Just talking to your Father in heaven? As though it's not so holy to be, oh God, and these and thous, and the Spirit gives you this unknown language you have to speak in in order to work yourself up to get into a holiness routine. And you have to picture something in heaven that you can't just sit down and say, hey, Jesus said that the Father would abide with me and come in and, you know, relax and actually spend time in my house. Did you know that Jesus came to Abraham's tent and ate? Did you know that Jesus on the beach built a fire, prepared the fish, and invited his disciples to sit and eat? Did you know that Jesus is about the normal things of life and that God the Father wants to be about your life as a normal part of it, not something distant and removed and only holy? <clears throat> the end of all things is at hand. I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. The heavens and the earth, which are now, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. You see that reserved unto fire against the day of judgment means it's over. It just hasn't happened yet. Meaning, it's been decided. It's not going to go much farther. It is corrupted. It is going to be reserved unto fire so that it can be purged of its corruption. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. A lot of times people get into this whole thing about every time there's a new war or there's a new this or a new that, they try to make it fit into prophecy and they take one part and they get all gaga about it. <gasps> Ooh, oh, I got the latest prophecy chills, you know. The end of the world is coming. The Lord said, hey, you know, chill out, you know. It's going to happen on a regular basis. It's not like the end is there. It's the beginning of the end, which has always been the beginning of the end. But as they begin to escalate, you'll see that it'll become obvious. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
we look for the new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. It's easy to make a righteousness that is a man because man is always trying to fix man. You see, that's how you know it's man's righteousness. But God imputes righteousness by saying, if you love and do my commandments, which his commandments are simply to love one another. That's all. It's not about 10 or 633 or some other thing or do this, do that, whatever really everything. It's about love. It's about being like the Father. It's about being so caring about others that you care less about yourself. And that at some point in time, you're willing to give up your life for the sake of someone else. The question is, have you let society say to you, no, I want them to die that I may live? You see, Jesus laid down his life, not just for his friends, and not just for the salvation of the world, but even for your enemy. Yes, the one that you possibly hate or may have a problem with. That's the kind of righteousness that God wants to work out in us. Because we can't do it ourselves. But when the new heaven and the new earth come, we will be loving. Because it will be about that kind of nature of God in us. That we choose by way of loving the Father so much. That we only want to do those things that please Him the same way that Jesus said about Himself that he did only those things that he saw his father doing and only wanted to please him. I hope today you would stop, sit down, take a long, hard look at what you're doing and say, am I doing this because I'm pleasing myself? Or am I doing this because I'm pleasing my father in heaven? 